All right. Um, good evening, everybody. My name is Kristen Ferguson, chair of the Concord Planning Board, and I'm calling this public meeting to order at 7.01 p.m. In accordance with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Executive Order of March 12th, 2020, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, we are conducting this meeting virtually, and this meeting is being recorded. So tonight we've got a couple of items on the agenda. We've got, um, first up, we'll hear from Middlesex School, and then we will turn to uh, Minuteman Arc Project, then we have some administrative business to take care of. I'm gonna start with a roll call and hope that we have our quorum. Um, so I see, uh, so just say if you are here, Ellen, Mr. Yeah. Saya, Mr. Here. Johnson. Present. Mr. Burt, or Mr. Flint. Present. And um, is Ms. Orbital here yet? All right, so what do we do to proceed since we have new biz a new, um, new business to attend to? Um, so you, um, you can, um, cannot take up either public hearing, you need five. Okay, so um, we'll go on to the other stuff first. Uh, you can just do some administrative until um, Hallie shows up. All right, well let's, um, Let's start with, um, we could start with the minutes because that is less likely to be controversial. Yep. Um, <laughs> um, you do not have the minutes for July 7th. Um, so we have the minutes for June 23rd, 2020. Oh, there's Hallie. <clears throat> oh, all right. Well, then let's, let's go back to normal stuff then. She's connecting on audio. And my dog is present in case that. In case she is needed. So while, while we're waiting, um, I just want to say this part about um, <clears throat> public comment. We understand the challenges of holding a virtual public forum and we'll do our best to make this as inclusive as possible. The public is invited to view the meeting as an attendee, <clears throat> but we will, but you're not permitted video access. If you have a question during the public comment period, uh, use the Q&A function. Um, <clears throat> And, um, and you just need to type your name and address, and that way we know who you are, we can acknowledge you, so we can get you in, in the record of the meeting. You could use the raise hand function, and we can unmute you, one attendee at a time, so we can hear your question. Um, or if you're on the phone, you can press star nine, and that allows you to raise your hand so we can call on you. So we would definitely like to hear from people. We'll have several opportunities through the evening, so please use one of those functions when it's time. And we were just taking roll call and um, Ms. Orbital, you are the uh, last member we've been waiting for. So you, if you are here, just let us know. Hey there, yep, I'm here. Hi, all right. So we are gonna get started with the first meeting. I'm going to open the public hearing for site plan review for the application of the Middlesex School under section 11.8 of the zoning bylaw for the construction of an 11 bedroom, two story modular transitional student housing building on the campus at 1400 Lowell Road, parcel 1533. And I believe we have two people um, representing the applicants here and um, you will be unmuted so we can hear from you. So we have um, Matt Crozier, who's the COO, CFO, COO. Uh, Steve McEwen, uh, he's with Middlesex School. Steve uh, McEwen, who is the CFO? Nope. He, he's a project manager, but that's okay. We, we'll okay. give him a promotion tonight. I'll give him a promotion. Um, and then Steven Ventresca, who is their engineer on the project. Um, so at this time, um, we'll just turn it over to the three of you and when um, they're ready, Stephen will um, allow share screen and you can go through the plans. Thank you very much. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Stephen Ventresco with Niche Engineering on behalf of Middlesex um, School. So as stated, we're here to um, review the plans for the transient housing. This is um, a modular building that will be placed on an existing parking lot in the Middlesex um, site. Um, this is uh, well within the site. Um, there are no issues with um, zoning or frontage, um, offsets to side, rear, or front um, properties. Um, 
we're looking to place this building, as I stated, within an existing parking lot on top of existing pavement. Um, this will allow for students that are living on campus, um, if they are <clears throat> found to be um, ill with COVID, to, um, to go to this facility um, to be quarantined. Um, we are looking to establish, uh, install this modular housing for this fall, so fall of 2020, uh, um, the start of school. So in September, or I should say late August, early September, um, I would like to show the site plan that we had um, prepared as part of the um, application. But I think it's disabled. Is that something Elizabeth or the chair um, could allow me to, to share my screen? I think, I think they're trying to give okay. you the opportunity to share. Yeah, and so there are, um, and I'll just elaborate a little bit more. So the placement of the modular unit is located in, a, in an area where we're not um, taking up, we're taking up approximately 27 existing parking spaces. We do have additional parking on the other side of the athletic center. Um, if the board is familiar with the site, we have the main athletic center, and this is off of the, um, I'm going to call it the secondary access off of um, Lowell Road. This is, um, I want to say Pratt Road, but. Um, go ahead and try now, Steve. Oh, okay. There we go. So just let me know if you can see this. Um, so this is a, a Google image from a couple years ago. Lowell Road is to your left. Um, this is the far end of, of campus, the northern part of campus. Um, this is the athletic center, this athletic building here, um, this little complex here. There's parking over here on this gravel lot. And then this is the area right here that's in question. Um, this is there where we want to put the modular unit. This is the existing parking lot. As you can see, again, this is an older Google image. Um, and this shows you um, a classroom that was installed a number, three, four years ago. Um, this has since been removed. Um, but we are taking advantage of utilities that were installed here as part of this project, which is a sewer connection, which is here. Um, and so we're going to take advantage of that connection. But the modular unit will be placed on this part of the existing parking lot. So now I'm going to zoom out and show you the site plan. So the athletic center is here in this light gray area. The orange is the new modular unit. And then the blue up here is the pool which is this pool that's right here in the Google image. Um, and as I stated, we're gonna reuse that existing sewer connection, which was installed three, four years ago for the sewer service for this modular unit. In addition, we're going to provide water and fire protection uh, for this modular unit. And so we're gonna provide that um, and tap off the existing 12 inch line, which runs within the center of the campus. Um, so this is the for domestic and fire protection. Um, on the initial application, when we sent in with the site plan, um, the, Elizabeth had um, some comments and requested that we adjust the location of the modular unit so that was offset from this existing island. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. So here's the existing island. Originally, we had put the building right up against the island. Elizabeth had recommended that we push it away five feet to allow students, if they needed to, to cross because there's a door here, access here, and then there's access here. Um, that if they did cut across, they could, um, didn't have to go onto the island or walk into the drive aisle. So we accommodated that and pushed the um, modular unit back five feet. Um, you will see that we are providing um, some barriers here for um, in case, uh, as people use the parking lot, that there isn't a possibility of a car driving into the modular unit. Um, we do show continued access or availability of the existing handicapped parking spaces and then we're providing some striping because we can reuse this access aisle um, because this is a, um, an accessible route and so we can provide this accessible route to the module unit using this ramp right here to get up to the module unit. So just to be just to give you an idea this module unit will be elevated above the existing grade and this gives you an idea of what that looks like. And so level zero feet above the existing parking lot, which is this elevation here. 
And so this is the two story uh, modular structure. The only lighting associated with this modular unit are at the doors. Um, these fixtures here and those fixtures will be dark sky compliant. Um, I know we've had a number of comments from you know, fire department, um, they had no issues. Um, I believe engineering had a couple of comments, um, one of which was adding splash blocks for the roof drains, which we're happy to accommodate. Um, and I believe that uh, typical or standard water and sewer comments um, as far as providing data sheets, et cetera, um, in anticipation of construction. And so with that, I'll open the floor if there are any questions from, from board members. Um, I'm happy to, um, to address them. And as Elizabeth stated, Steve McEwen from Middlesex is here to also um, answer some additional questions that I might not be able to answer. Yeah, thanks, Steve. I just, before we go to, to full questions, I just wanted to uh, reiterate or further explain that this uh, floor plan is very similar to the Oates Lane uh, houses that we brought onto campus last summer. It's um, actually proposed to be built by the same company, uh, preferred, preferred Building Systems, um, which is a modular housing company out of New Hampshire. And um, so as far as that aspect of it, it, it that is actually an exact mirror of, of what this board saw last summer, so. And I, I think the application mentioned you're going to repurpose it after. What did you do with the building from last summer? Where did that end up? So correct. So last summer we brought three uh, new faculty duplexes onto campus uh, because faculty housing on campus is um, is tight. So currently we have roughly about 60% of our faculty members uh, have an opportunity to live on campus. And um, it's something we look to provide just due to the nature of 24 seven boarding school. So the, the nature of this would be open to students um, as we navigate the challenges of COVID-19. And then ideally, we would look to repurpose this as another faculty duplex uh, in the future at a, at a completely different location that we would then, of course, bring to this board um, and to site and also to just go through all of the, uh, the parameters again. This is Matt Crozier just adding on because I think the chair's question related to what happened to the structure that Steve showed in the video in the his visual presentation. So that was that was actually a temporary um, trailer system from Triumph Modular. So it was not meant ever to be a permanent structure. It just existed for classroom space. And mm -hmm. so it was actually, we leased that. And when the lease was up, honestly, it's at another high school somewhere probably doing similar work while somebody else is doing construction right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let me open it up to the board. Um, what questions for the applicant do folks have? Yes, Matt. Uh, so I just was curious about the access to the uh, accessible parking spaces. H how is that done again? I, it, it went by real fast, so I, uh, I wasn't clear how cars are going to be able to access that. So uh, based on the, the placement of the modular unit, we're maintaining that off the, or the drive aisle between the parking spaces. Um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit more here. So you can see the existing parking spaces here. This is the access aisle um, and additional parking spaces here. And then the edge of the proposed ramp is right at the edge of the existing parking spaces, which is here. I'm just gonna strike a line that shows you that, that offset or the, the edge of the, the existing parking, which is here. And then I'll draw okay, another so line. They yeah, that drive, shows you. Drive over yeah. that hatch marked area. Exactly. Exactly. It's just painted. So we're, we're maintaining access that is current through here so that they can yeah. drive through. And then we're also maintaining access on the other okay. side of this parking lot. All right. So they can Thanks. drive in this way. So absolutely. So it'll allow for, for fire um, access as well as, um, you know, regular parking. Okay. Um, and then the other thing is, I was curious again, just, just see the elevation one more time. I mean, I've got it here offline, but um, yeah, I guess, okay, so these elevations, when I first saw it, it, I thought that I was looking at a flat facade, but actually these are not flat. They're, they're coming out, they're. Correct, uh, yeah. let me see, I think on the okay. next. Yeah, I need yeah, to I, just get from the site plan. Yeah, and I have, I have a floor plan here that shows you, you can see. Okay. How that juts out, so. Yeah, okay. Yep. 
All right, thank you. And I just wanted to say, uh, I, I appreciate the effort that you guys are having to go through for the sake of this. Uh, it's quite, uh, quite a venture here to accommodate the students and I definitely appreciate it. Well, we thank you for saying that. And this, it's, it's, it's obviously, um, we're acting honestly out of a very much an abundance of caution, but I think we're, you know, we're really eager to be able to serve and quarantine if necessary. So we appreciate the board's willingness to listen to our, our proposal. Are there other questions or comments from the board before we open it up to public comment? I'm seeing none. So let me remind folks, if you are listening on the phone, if you're an attendee and you'd like to comment, you can use the raise hand function. We can unmute you. Um, please state your name and address, or you can um, type into the Q&A your name and address, and we can address you. So. Um, so this is not set up as a webinar, oh, so there sorry. is no um, question and answer function. So people just need to raise their hand. Thank you. I'm reading the wrong notes. <laughs> Do you see anybody raising hand? All right, I'm going to give people another minute just, just in case and then um, All right, if there's no public comment and no more board discussion, we can close this public hearing. And then I would entertain a motion from the board. Anybody have their memo handy? Um, yes, I'll go ahead. So I move that the planning board uh, grant site plan approval to the Middlesex School under Section 11A of the Zoning Bylaw for the construction of an 11 bedroom, two story modular transitional student housing building on the campus at 1400 Lowell Road based on the findings and conditions as specified in the town planner's report dated July 16th, 2020. Is there a second? I second that, Kristen. Thanks. All right. Um, let's take a vote. Uh, Mr. Saya? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Aye. Mr. Flint? Yes. Ms. Orbital? Yes. And this is Kristen Ferguson. Yes. So, um, good luck with the construction and um, good luck with the school year. I hope it goes as, as smoothly as possible. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Thanks for your time. For coming. Thank you. All right. Our uh, next site plan review is we'll start in about 10 minutes so we can skip back over to some administrative business. The we were looking at we we're just about to look at um, minutes from the June 23rd meeting. See if anybody had any comments or changes to them. I noticed Elizabeth that you have something highlighted in them on um, on the third page. Um, so that was the change. So okay. the board had yeah. the last meeting. Oh. Right. Yeah. So thanks for, for finding that. Um, I did, when I was rereading these minutes, I just found a couple of uh, small typos. Um, I don't know. I can just forward them to Nancy maybe. Uh, but it's basically on the first page uh, in the paragraph below where it says town planner Elizabeth Hughes was present. The last line boards, the apostrophe is a plural apostrophe, it should be singular. Then in the next paragraph, the next to the last line, there's an extraneous is saying that and the community is can complete. And then there's another apostrophe problem in the next paragraph that says planning board's goals, there needs to be an apostrophe, there isn't. Um, and then finally, on the second page uh, where it talks about Bonnie Albright, uh, I assume if we do not have her address that the comma should go away. I, I assume the comma is there with the intention of introducing an address, but it's not there. So those are just some, some little catches, editorial catches. So then I would um, move that we approve the 
minutes of the planning board meeting of June 23rd, 2020 as amended. Second that. All right, Mr. Sayah. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yep. Mr. Flint. Yes. Ms. Orbital. Yes. And this is Kristen Ferguson. Yes. So we've got minutes taken care of. And um, Elizabeth, there is one person wait in the waiting room. I don't know if I was allowed to admit him or if you'd you like to. But I just did. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, so moving right along. Um, we, let's see, let's, we, why don't we talk about the, um, the throw depot, uh, throw business depot vision report. Um, we were just planning to have some discussion. I will open it up to public comment and then we'll kind of talk about the next steps there. Did, uh, it was a very thorough memo that I think was summarized nicely what we heard at the last meeting. Did anybody have any comments or discussions or, or things that they would like to have our folks from MAPC take back and, and make edits to? I, I sure did, <laughs> but go ahead. Um, if anybody else wants to start. One comment I, I had, Kristen, was there, there was a reference to uh, modifying height uh, requirements uh, from 35 to 38 feet, and depending on the sub-district. And I would like to just see a little bit, it, it said that that would be to allow flexibility of design and maybe a little bit of an expansion in the report and what that gets you. I presume it means that you can get three-story with a, with a pitched roof. Um, uh, but it would be nice just to have a little bit more information on that, I think, because I, I believe that'll be a, 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 an issue that a lot of people focus on. Well, and actually, I'd like to build upon that because it actually says in the report that the 38 feet would allow for four stories, right, for, um, it, for buildings without frontage. Right. And so the, the objections I have to that are two. First of all, if you look back in the report at page, um, at, at uh, where is it, the, the page where we reviewed the, where we had the public forum, um, those, there we go, a uh, visual preference survey on page 13, that none of the examples for visual preference showed a four story building. So we never gave the public any opportunity to even look at a four-story option, you know, and, and now we're saying, oh, well, let's raise the amount to allow a four-story building. And then the other objection I have is that the sample building uh, image given uh, on uh, page 34 for a 38 foot tall building is a three-story building. And, you know, just, and again, it says four, <laughs> It, up to four stories for buildings without frontage. And then the very next sentence in parentheses says, see photo, you know, but it's not a four story building. And, and in fact, it's a building that has a very extreme roof line and brings you down to the second story. So it's one of these that is trying to look as low as possible. Whereas I think if the intent is to offer four stories that the image should show a four story building. So I just, I feel like uh, it's maybe a bridge too far um, for this. To, anyway. to propose 38 feet, is that what you're saying? Well, it, especially to propose, I mean, the-, the Four uh, stories? Four stories. Again, if we did not offer the public any visual preference options that illustrated that, it just seems a little out of, the, out of scope. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think there were actually those options on the board. I think what you're seeing in the report was those were not the, the most favored options. I see. I, that was my board. So I can tell you there were, yeah, there were. Four okay. Stories. There were there. So there were four story options. Yeah. Okay. Well, that, helps. that, that may make your point even more um, that, that those yeah, were not. That people part. didn't want it. Yeah. yeah. And that would seem like useful information if the next step is for them to help, you know, draft. Chain. Yeah, so we yeah. want to kind of give that kind of constructive feedback. Right. And, you know, I, I have to just say on a personal level, I, I actually think four stories would work in the area of the back 
where Crosby's is these days, you know, now that's not on the street. I actually think that it, that could potentially work, but that's, again, I just oh, don't, I, when I look at the public feedback, it doesn't seem to mesh with that. Mm -hmm. And, and remember, there's also, I don't know, I'll call them a butters, but the people on Thoreau street that are going to be facing whose backyards face Crosby's, there mm -hmm. might be a, a difference between that, that three and four stories now. Yeah. So are we, let's, let's capture, are we asking them to just provide a different picture or are we going to direct them to um, not make the recommendation of up to 38 feet? Well, I think it'd just be worth relaying this feedback and just see what they want to do. I mean, it's their memo, right? So we'll, we'll hear what they have to say, I think. Um, then uh, I had another comment, which, well, I mean, I have a few, but one is about uh, the transportation and connectivity recommendations on slide 35. And it's interesting that while there's, you know, a point made to pay a particular attention to the intersection at Sudbury Road and Thoreau Street, there's no mention of the railroad crossing. And it just seems like that is a major feature, you know, uh, of this in, in challenge for the transportation and connectivity. And so there should be at least some mention in this section of that and, and what we could potentially do about it. Um, uh, then on slide 29, to me, the, um, the business about block structure, small block size, and, and what they're trying to show in the illustration, I don't really understand what, how the site and building design standards in this case are ensuring new development. I mean, I think of the market itself and that it's a necessity of being one large block. So I don't see how these L's would work. And I guess if someone could explain it, that would be fine, but I, I don't understand it. Um, and then I don't understand whether on slide 26 on the column two for the parking requirements why one space per affordable could be called out as a different level of parking spot rather than 1.5 spaces, you know, for two to two point plus bedroom unit. It seems like affordable units don't need as many parking spaces as other units. And, you know, I don't know that we can or should make such a distinction. Um, and maybe there's a precedent for that. The current language in that's in the, in the zoning code, that it's, it's referenced in blind that. to yeah. It just says per re, per unit, you know. So it, I like the idea of min, minimizing parking requirements, but just calling out affordable units as having fewer parking than other types seems strange to me. So so I'm, I'm I'm I didn't go back and look at the zoning code, but the memo it says that the existing zoning provides We're for two per unit or one and a half spaces for affordable housing or senior housing. Really? So it does? Huh. Well, that's what the memo says. I, like I said, I haven't gone back and checked, but I didn't assume. Yeah, and um, to Matt's point, um, I would not be surprised if MAPC has the actual um, parking data and analysis um, to support that parking ratio. So okay. um, that's something that we can just ask them to, to beef up that explanation in this um, a little bit more. Okay. Um, now we're at 730. I don't know, Kristen, if you wanna go back to our public hearing agenda and then we can come back to this. I've got a few more points. Yeah, we can do that, and that way we can have time to have other people comment. Is there anything yeah, before yeah, I'm we? Yeah, sorry, I've been dominating. Oh no, I meant yeah. other. I meant the public comment. No, this is. These are all really good points. It was. It's a very comprehensive memo. So thanks for taking the time to go through it. We're um, before we leave. Is there any anybody on the board that wants to comment um, so they don't lose the thought before we come back to this? All right. So yes, I'm gonna I'm gonna table this and come back to it because. Um, 
it, it did generate a lot of excitement, this, um, this potential plan. So now we are moving on to our, our 730 item. And so I will open the, or we'll actually reopen the public hearing. And this one is for <clears throat> the application of Minuteman ARC for Human Services Inc. under section 11.8 of the zoning bylaw for the expansion and reconfiguration of parking lot, addition of sports court, and internal sidewalk at 35 Forest Ridge Road, parcel 2971-1. So um, I just wanted to thank uh the folks at minute man art for hosting some of the planning board members um last week i think it was really uh, very helpful to walk through and and look at everything with you um it was matt and alan and myself so for the benefit of ms orbital and mr flint um i'll say we were able to to walk kind of in the parking lot where the where the path would go we would see where the path is going to go along the side there, look where the sports court was going to be, see the approximate height of the, uh, I can't remember if it's called the retaining wall or, you know, how, how far above the, um, the parking lot it was going to be. We could see the, how it was going to be screened by trees from the road. And um, we also looked at the existing islands. Um, so I, you know, and, and Matt or Alan, if you want to add anything to provide context to um, Burton or Haley before we, um, you know, have the candidate respond to kind of any other final questions we had, let me just see if there's anything from that visit that you wanted to pass along. Well, I think just to summarize the concerns, it was really about pedestrian flow when the parking lot was really at the center of things. And so I'm very glad to see that the revised plan does uh, address some of those comments. The other thing that for me, my personal concern that I expressed in the last meeting was about the elevated uh, court and um, you know its position toward the front of the property. But uh, just being there at the site visit really helped a lot to uh, allay my concerns about it. And it seems fine to me at this point uh, especially considering the other site constraints. Um, the other thing that I think we got to appreciate by uh, being there in person is that in the area where the path is going to go around uh, the the east and and the south of the site there, um, that the um, trees and and other you know cover that's there is not that precious. Uh, and that in fact, the, the more important trees are further back. Um, so I think that there's been some care taken, I think to, to minimize the um, uh, natural impact. So those were the comments that I had from my visit. Thanks, Alan, did you wanna add anything? Um, no, I think um, Matt covered everything. Okay. And we were even able to walk down and kind of look at um, where they were going to build a, a berm for the stormwater. So I will pass it over to the applicant to see if there's any other final questions. I think the remaining item that we were discussing really was the island, but let me let you kind of um, summarize anything else from our walk and, and uh, we can discuss right after that. Sure. Thank you, Madam Chairman, for the uh, Miniman Arc. I'm Jeffrey Brem with Meister Brem Corporation. I'll also here on the Zoom meeting is Gene Goldsbury and Eric Barash. So uh, we're all here and we were all at the site walk. The major change that you all talked about was really the, the path, pedestrian pathway from the main entrance, which is where my hand is, to this greenhouse area and how uh, that's gonna be accomplished as the old plan showed it coming across and there was an opening in this, one of these spaces here, we're gonna turn into a, come in, a walkway uh, instead uh, we're going to be basically building a sidewalk adjacent to the existing um, pathway through uh, drive access way here. So it'll be off the roadway with a full crosswalk across to a sidewalk and the sidewalk will join up with this existing pavement uh, near the greenhouse. And then the new pavement, uh, as uh, Matt was talking about, will come around to the south and go to the sports court here. Uh, the only other, we made a few other changes. We added some landscaping features, some evergreen trees here. Uh, we changed this island a little bit so that we open the island a little bit so we can add a 
uh, uh, maple tree here. I think that's what the landscape architect picked. So we enlarge it a little bit. It's still being striped for the most part, but it's being enlarged. We changed some of these dimensions to uh, more adequately show how this handicap striping is going to be. We shortened this uh, island up a little bit. And we, had, we wrote a letter to uh, respond to both Concord Public Works and engineering. And I'll do the engineering one first. He, um, Alan wrote a letter today, I think it was today, July 20th, yesterday. I presume you all have that in the packet, Madam Chair? I know we had some things that came in uh, just under the wire, so. All right, I'll, I'll quickly go through it. I won't read everything, but I'll just read the summary. Uh, he talked about the islands that we just talked about. Uh, and his final comment is updated plans show portion of islands being saved, comment addressed. He talked about, uh, let me go back to the plan here. He talked about the, uh, the parking number in this area was 17 when there was only 16. And we've changed that to show basically seven and nine spaces. So that's uh, comment addressed. The ADA walk, um, again, he was looking at this intersection here. We've changed that. Revised plan show ADA accessible walk, comment addressed. Uh, TSS calculation, total suspended solids. Uh, we submitted a report and uh, he, his final comment is TSS removal calculations have been submitted with a resubmittal, comment addressed. Uh, rational method calculations to verify that the piping that we did won't be surcharged. Uh, rational method, his comment, rational method calculations have been submitted that show the pipe capacity is not exceeded, comment addressed. I like these, by the way. Uh, number six, is the integrity of the drainage system here, as I told you, it was designed well, but this last bit, this berm was never built. Um, Alan's comment is that we request a condition of approval be added, which requires verification of the existing system's integrity prior to the start of construction. That was our comment that we asked for. He says, this is an appropriate condition of approval as long as standard inspection methods are used and submitted to the town for review. So somebody who was potentially gonna make a motion, that would be a condition. Uh, number seven, the existing leaching catch basin that's here, I sent a picture showing that it was uh, recently cleaned up. There's the outlet pipe, the riprap, the structure. We didn't actually see this because it was around the corner of the trees, but that's what it looks like. Uh, we requested that a condition of approval be put in there to make sure everything works well. His comment, this is an appropriate condition of approval as long as the standard inspection methods are used uh, and submitted to the time for review, same comment. This should include a time drawdown that proves that the leaching cast basin is, in operating, is operating correctly. That's no problem, we do a 72 hour drawdown. Number eight is the O1M report and we submitted this O1M report here. Um, and his comment on that is the O1M plan has been submitted. The annual maintenance report shall be submitted to CPW engineering for review as a condition of approval. But there's another condition. Uh, as far as the water and sewer comments, we talked about the sport court surrounded by a chain link fence. Uh, the landscape plan showed both netting and fencing. So let me see if I could do this. Um, the landscape architect uh, submitted a detail and I'm not gonna be able to see it. Uh, it's a JPEG and I'm not showing it here. So um, I'm sorry about that. But I don't know if you all saw it, but it's basically a, saw, a wooden post and rails and a kind of a, uh, I gotta find it. Let me try to find it. Um, Jeff, that's, um, that's okay. I did get a late email from the water sewer engineer who did get the additional information from the landscape architect and um, they are all set and don't have any further issues um, with the netting and we'll just have standard recommended conditions of approval. Great. And lastly on that, if you recall, there's a water easement going over uh, the sports court and other areas, and they want to have uh, certain rights to go in there. Uh, and a, a post condition of approval would that be an agreement be uh, entered into by the uh, water department and the landowner. Uh, that's it. And uh, I, I thank the board again, I, and as I know Gene and Eric do for coming out and spending your time and looking at the site. Um, the pictures are worth a thousand words, the site visits even worth more. So thank you for all coming. <laughs>
thank you. Yeah, I would yeah. echo that. We really appreciated your time to come out and, um, and spend a significant amount of time taking a look at the site and walking around it and getting to understand what, what was being proposed and, and why some of the decisions. Don't ever give your dog an iPhone. Um, <laughs> why some of the decisions we were making were being made. So um, thank you. All right. Well, um, thank you for showing us those those changes. It looks like some some good, hopefully, improvements. Uh, anyone from the board have questions that you would like to get answered or comments? It looks like they they have heard our our comments and and tried to address them as well as uh, comments from the town. Elizabeth, so, oh, go ahead, Alan. Yeah, about the islands. Uh, I know we talked quite a bit about this. Uh, so right now, uh, there is one island. Uh, I see one of the islands is being shrunk, right? And the other island is uh, is gone, correct? Is that how it is? Well, first of all, if I can, the island that separates this through parking and this through parking, there is an island there. And right. that's where the septic system is, is vents and so forth. That's being retained. So the island between the two, it's at the tail ends. This one right, correct, is, is, is going to be removed and replaced with some striping and parking. And this one is being removed and replaced with some striping, parking, and a small island enough to build, put a, a nice uh, landscape tree there. Okay. So we, we did a compromise, basically. And, but and we'll, we'll, if I may, what we did do, and this I guess is an important feature, is we took away the uh, the walkway that would take place between the uh, uh, the participants of the facility. They would instead of going around through the parking lot to the sports court, or through the parking lot this way to the sports court, they're now going to be in a protected area mm -hmm. all the way across and all the way around. And for. Burton and, and Hanley's benefit, um, you know, a, a raised island, although landscaping and, and does break up the parking lot and, and serve a number of functions, it, it we've learned that it is a challenge for the population that, that uses that and, and like a tripping hazard in many cases. So it sounded like they were really trying to reduce the possibility of that while still maintaining some, um, you know, some sort of break in the in the pavement structure. So that I think is where, where the compromise ended up. But Alan, did your question get answered though? Yeah. Um, Elizabeth, or, um, I, we, I think we read that, that all the comments had been addressed. Do you have all of the information that you need to uh, write in the appropriate conditions? Um, so what I would recommend is um, that I mean, the the board can um, can vote and and recommend that you just continue this you know, to your next meeting to review your written decision. That way, I can work with town staff to get all of the appropriate conditions in place for the site plan decision. Okay. Is there any more town or no? Is there any more board discussion? Okay. Let me ask if there is any. Uh, comment from the public. We're we're anxious to get started on this, so we're we're hoping for uh, approval at your next meeting. So I think our next meeting is is August eleventh. Um, so if um, I would I would uh, close this public hearing, I would close this public meeting. Public. <laughs> and then I would uh, entertain a motion to, as Elizabeth said, um, continue this to our next meeting, which is August 11th, so that um, we can review the, the, final, um, the final report. Elizabeth, so, was that, wait. were you recommending we vote to approve subject to reviewing the, 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 the letter of conditions? Um, so there's, um, the, you can, you can just continue this now oh. with direction, um, or you can you can vote and then continue it to review um, your draft decision. But um, oh, I can't close it. Either 
Well, no, you can, yeah, you can close the public. You just did close the public hearing and that's fine. Okay. Um, but at least, um, you know, if it's a, a vote to approve, that helps me write a, a decision um, for approval. Um, and I think the planner's report hit on all of the you know, requirements. Um, one comment Matt made that I would add, you know, that care was taken to minimize the removal of trees and the impact of the project um, and to add that to the findings as well. So if that's the direction the board would like to go, then that's, um, that's all I need. And you can just continue it to your next meeting and I'll draft that decision. So okay. I, go ahead, Burton. I was gonna say, so I, I think I've got it that I would make a motion to approve the application and uh, with the site plan, the expansion and reconfiguration of the parking lot, addition of sports courts and internal sidewalk pursuant to zoning bylaw section 11.8 subject to planning board's review of the the um, the approval letter at our next planning board meeting. Perfect. I second. Um, okay, all right. well, just one, one point of discussion. I know that in the past, sometimes we've just designated a member to review that to see that the uh, conditions were incorporated and that way it wouldn't even have to come back to the next meeting. Would that be reasonable to do in this case i would have no i would have no issue with that um uh, what i can tell you is um if that's the direction the board wants to go the decision would um, mirror the findings that were in my initial report you know, with right. that one section added the conditions would be um the the few that um engineering that jeff talked about tonight um, there's also going to be just standard conditions that the board has routinely seen. Um, there'll be an, at least a, an additional condition from water sewer on the timing of when that revised easement language uh, would be provided and um, you know, reported. So I um, guess I, so it comes down to a question of would it make a material difference to the schedule here? Well, if I can, uh, you know, it's like we always say in the construction business, time time goes away. We had a 20 day appeal period after the decisions filed with the town clerk too. So that kicks it into sep late sep middle of September. Uh, so any anything you could do to speed that up would be fine. In other words, uh, if you were to which, go that route. Which yeah. the, the, for the applicant, um, the applicant can move forward during the appeal period on having getting all the conditions done and um, getting ready. And um, there's no statutory requirements similar to um, the state zoning act for variances where you can't move forward during the appeal period. Um, it's more like a special permit where you can you can move forward during the appeal period at your own risk. At risk. Um, but so I, it's entirely, I'm perfectly comfortable with the board designating a board member to review the decision. And, and since our meeting is not, I think it's about three weeks away. Yeah, it's three. Per, it's perhaps three that would be a, a good way to go. Is there, is there someone that's interested in reviewing it or is that going to be me? I like to give everybody an opportunity. Oh, actually, I'm going to be on vacation in August, so um, so somebody else might want to do that. Just I know how efficient Elizabeth is, unfortunately. I'm willing to look at it. Thanks. So, do we need to? Um, does Burton need to um, do a new motion or amend that motion? Yep. Okay. Can, can do over. <clears throat> Ready, Burton? Okay. Um, let me. Th okay. So I. Uh, withdraw my prior motion and make it a new motion to approve the site plan uh, for the expansion and reconfiguration of parking lot addition of sports court and internal sidewalk pursuant to zoning bylaw section 11.8 and that we de designate or delegate to Matt uh, the authority to to review the approval letter from Elizabeth um, and that 
no further action would be required from us. I'll second it. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mr. Saya? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Flint? Yes. Ms. Orbital? Yes. Ms. Ferguson says yes. So thank you very much for um, what you're doing there and good luck with the project. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Thank again you all very, very much. much. We really appreciate your time. All right. All right. Thank so you. you're welcome. And um, as they close up there, we can um, head back over to head back across town to uh, the Row Business District and pick up where we left off because that was an exciting conversation. <clears throat> um, Matt had some good comments. Um, let's hear from other folks. Um, what did you see or not see in the memo that we want to take time to um, ask for clarification? About, about the height discussion that uh, um, Matt, your, uh, you, you brought up. So the idea is to keep the 38 but not uh, to say it cannot be four stories. That's, that's uh, I, I, I didn't quite understand what you meant by that. Four stories. Well, I think what I was just doing was passing on some feedback to the MAPC and just seeing what they say about it. Okay, mm -hmm. so, it, you know, again, they're publishing a memo. It's their, their point of view. We, I, I had some feedback, you know, when we then look at this thing, we can decide what we want to do about it or not. Right. So I just wanted to just make sure they were aware that from my point of view, you know, their recommendation doesn't really match what the, the public input we got was at the public forum. And that secondly, their example doesn't seem to match the intent of going to the 38 feet. Those were the two points that I, I thought that the MAPC should be aware of as they revise their memo. Ellen, did you have any thoughts about the height or? Um... Well, um, I, I, I agree with Matt that four stories in the back would be fine. Uh, but again, it's, uh, it's MAPC's recommendation now, right? I mean, that's what we're talking about. So I yeah. clarify that basically, yeah. Well, they are, it is the recommendation, but it, it's supposed to reflect kind of what the community is saying. So we want. I think we want to make sure they get as close to Right. you know what what the public is looking for and what we're looking for because that of that next step but so i i think this is the the feedback that they're looking for is that if the board doesn't feel that the 38 feet was reflective of um what you know they you know the board heard at the forum and then at you know at the last presentation um, then that should not be included in this vision memo. Ultimately, this vision memo will be what is utilized to create draft zoning. Yeah, you know what I might say is is they, they, they created this concept of the two two sub districts, and and I think what we Alan and Matt both said was they they and and what's suggested in this plan is that four stories could be with buildings without frontage, I think that we could really, the buildings without frontage would only really be going in, or what we're talking about is in the, in the Thoreau Marketplace sub-district. So maybe what we could suggest is that Thoreau Street should remain the same at 35 with the flexibility for different um, uh, heights in the, in the marketplace area. Matt, do you think that's more in line with what you're, you're saying? Yeah, I, I was saying that that does match my personal feeling, you know, again, that as long as it's not on the frontage and, and um, you, like you say, the only site that really lends itself to that is, is there, um, then, you know, I'm okay with going four stories there. I think it's a useful place to do that. I mean, I, I have to say that, you know, I've seen other projects where because of the height not being uh, available that then they just take up a bigger footprint you know and so that that's not really what we're trying to achieve here um so i'm i'm okay with it personally it's just that i i want to be a public servant here 
Yeah, I mean, the interesting thing is if we were talking about preserving a, you know, a, a, a market on, in that space with housing above, I don't think you'd be able to get four stories above a market. On Probably three. not. Yeah, it's going to be taller. Yeah, oh. on that first floor. Okay. Um, okay, so, so Elizabeth, are you clear on how we can reply to um, the well, So, the what is what is very um, nice is that I have my notes, um, but this entire Zoom meeting link will be forwarded <laughs> directly to them. There you go. Um, so that yeah, yeah, so that they can. Um, fully understand. So, okay. um, so I'm not worried about them missing <laughs> okay. the point. Um, and I actually think this is better than just a tape of a meeting because uh, it works better. All right. Um, other other comments, questions, direction for MAPC. One thing, uh, you know, what we don't, I, I think we've got an idea on how you modify heights and things like that. The thing that's more new, new ground for us is some of these design standards. Um, and uh, maybe, maybe some discussion of examples we could look to that would be, would be very helpful to have in, in their recommendation. Yeah. I think that's the most exciting part of the project, personally. Um, then uh, I wanted to say, and so maybe I should move to a few more tactical kind of pieces of feedback. So that like on page six, it says that multi-family buildings are not defined in the zoning bylaws, but I mean, they are defined in the PRD, right? We have multi-family units, eight, up to eight, right? So it's just a little too strong a statement, I'd say. Um, and then there was yeah, no specific. Um, I don't. There's no specific separate definition. Uh, well, right. It's not in the definition section. That's true. Um, then there's a mention on uh, page 12 of the master plan. I think they mean the comprehensive long range plan. There's not a master plan for this area. Okay, and then um, I was curious about what was the finding around sub-districts? Uh, are sub-districts, are they a thing? I mean, you know, with separate kinds of criteria or do we just need two districts here? Remember I asked that question last time. Yeah, I, I, I think it ultimately comes down to you would have two separate districts if if the differences you know were so, such as height so you may have the throw market district and the throw depot district and it may be defined you know on one side of you know sad, sadly one side of the tracks and then the other side of the tracks um, however that gets um, defined on a map but I think that's probably what you would end up having. Okay. And then how would Henry David Thoreau feel about having a district called the Thoreau Marketplace District? Um, he might not be have a problem with Thoreau Depot, but Thoreau Marketplace, <laughs> I don't know. Um, he was an entrepreneur, but, you know, but uh, I'm, we have we have we have quite well, a long time before we ever have to worry about what the name is going to be. So and um, that's true. It could be the Sudbury Marketplace, I suppose. That's that's interesting. So just I'm thinking ahead, and we don't have to. I know this is not where we're going, but would that be two changes? Would would there be town meeting um, bylaw proposals where we'd say, okay, we'd like to create two new um, or or change this into two new business districts, and then the following year? we'd say, okay, now these are what takes place in those districts, or do you do that all at the same time? No, it would be done all at the same time. Okay. Yeah, you could not, you could not define a new district without putting the okay. parameters in place at the same time. Okay. 
All right. Although we did do that once upon a time. I mean, we just created these these four business districts, and I don't believe that we created any special criteria for them at first, and then later we did. But was that like a long time ago when? Like 2010. Oh, some, oh not a long time ago. Okay. Yeah. Um, created which? You probably had the, the village business things district. like that. When we initially time. created them. We carved them out um, in anticipation. It was. It was where I, I failed in my first um, petition article that I succeeded in creating the districts, but failed in getting um, the, uh, you know, formula business designations for each of them. I believe that's how it worked. But, but anyway, then that was the reason to carve them out at first. Now, since then, having them carved out has been helpful because we have uh, made changes to those districts relative to others. I believe that's how it happened. Anyway, it was a while ago now, but well, um, we, can, we can always put the DPLM director on the spot and ask her. Okay. Well, I mean, we don't need to do it right now. I was just kind of thinking about the, the process itself and it does seem to make sense if we're ready yeah, to the point where we're going to, to, to split them up there's this is the reason they're split up and that yeah. goes along with them so yes that usually sense. you do it because you have to but in my case it was because i was hoping to designate a limit mm -hmm. per district and i needed a district first so i could do that okay um, okay then my final comment is uh, just a question around what are liner buildings i've never heard of a liner building before maybe we could you know just get a picture of one or something anyway and that is on page. I heard of it. Um, that's on uh, page, page 34. 34. First column toward the bottom. I don't know, Alan. In addition, introdu introducing new building types such as liner buildings could help create frontages. Oh, so it seems like. Buildings. Say it again. In buildings, that's what they mean, I think, by liner building. Like they, they define their, uh, the street, street walls, street, uh, street facades. That's a line of building, I think. Create frontages and help um, and hide parking areas to yeah. provide a block structure. Hmm. So, Alan, uh, an example of liner buildings is that like all the the buildings along Com Ave in the village. Uh, I don't know if these are liner. It's more in urban areas are liner building there. Um, I'm sure I can find an image in my Yeah, so basically, it's uh, how to define a line of building. They're usually thin uh, and uh, and and align. Yes, align the. Um, um, they they come very close to the street basically, and then they uh, they have a larger area in the back. So it's very thin and long. That's that's a line of building. That's that's how you define it. But I don't I don't know which example you mentioned on come out. Um, I'm not sure in Concord we have line of buildings. But. Let's see. Well, then I, I think it is worth getting a little more explication on yeah. that. Yeah, what they mean by that. Yeah. Liner buildings are thin buildings that line the edge of a street, plaza, parking lot, or public space. Right. But I you want to kind of see how that would be different than yeah, show me another building. The thing. Yeah. Okay. All good comments. Go ahead. I think it's a subjective way of understanding a liner building. There's no, uh, you can say this is a liner building, but I, I don't know what they mean. So maybe they, they should uh, define it uh, much precisely. All right. Um, excellent comments. Thank you very much. Um, other comments from the board before we open it up to public comment? I mean, it is, it is sure to generate lots of, um, lots of excitement and talk. Um, we did get one public comment from Joe Stein. We got an email from him um, and, and hopefully, and um, hopefully Mr. Stein and, and a lot of the other folks that are very interested in this will have a number of opportunities to weigh in. And as we discussed last time, this is a very long 
long term, long view project. So we should have plenty of time to to plan. Okay, so then I will open it up to the public. Please raise your hand if you'd like to if you'd like to contribute to the discussion, this will not be your only time, um, but we'd like to make sure that if you have comments that can be reflected in our clarification for the memo, which is gonna guide the next step, we'd like to hear those now. I found an image of a liner building. Um, so, um, <laughs> does it add clarification? Um, so, so Kristen has asked for public comment. Um, we do have one person who's called oh, in, can't. so they will need to state their name and address for the record. Sue Felson, 1975 Lane. Uh, Hi, Sue. We can hear yeah. you. Good. Okay. I'm also on the regular meeting. There is no raise hand option in this meeting, nor a chat function. I don't know why Zoom is being so weird this time. I hope there are no other members of the public having problems. So, um, what is the timeline on this? If I have comments that I would like to go into your response to Matsu, should I raise them now? Um, so, so actually, Sue, you can you can submit um, written comments by email, and they will be forwarded to the board and to MAPC, the um, the planner there. Um, the time frame on this project is. Um, you know, they'll take this vision, they'll begin to um, finalize that along with draft um, potential zoning bylaw amendments. Um, I think they're going to try and finish by the end of the year to then come back and present um, to the board. And then from there, we'll start a year process of community input and education before it gets on should it go forward for town meeting in 2022? Two. Two. Yikes, a long time away. Okay, well, in that case, rather than taking up your time online, I will send a comment by email. Great. Perfect. And, but Elizabeth, to your point, um, what, what uh, timeline can we give people to have their comments in by so that we not keep kind of dribbling comments to MAPC? Um, I, I would say, you know, at least, you know, at least two weeks, you know, get comments in by email in, you know, in the next two weeks to MAPC and then have them move forward. Good question. Thank you, Ms. Delshin. Um, sorry about the Zoom issues. It's always something. Um, I'm not seeing any other hands, and I'm, I hope that's not a function of a technology issue. No. <laughs> but if you are listening to this call and you would like to submit comments, we would like to hear them and incorporate them. So please send those by email. Um, uh, and are you seeing anything else? So then I think that's, uh, if there's nothing else, I think that's what we're up to today. We will um, let MAPC know that we're going to be accepting comments and, and the board, if we have any other things to that think occur to us, we'll let them know in the next two weeks. And after that point, we will direct them to make change, those changes to the vision and then begin the draft recommendations for the bylaw changes. So there should be plenty of time for public to weigh in. And I think also plenty of time for, um, as Elizabeth said, public as education about smart growth, about, um, you know, building types and building heights and, 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 you know, what we're trying to do here rather than grow the population, but really kind of grow the usefulness of the area and, um, and really align with the, the longer range vision. So, if there's nothing else, let's move on to some of our last items, which are uh, getting ready for town meeting in September. We are having the uh, pre-meeting, pre, -here, pre -meeting, the hearing. Is it a hearing? 
in August. Okay, so we're having um, our hearing. We're really warmed up for this. We are all ready. Um, we are going to be presenting on Wednesday, August 19th at 7 o'clock. And um, what we can just do tonight is decide, do we need to, you know, do the same people who presented the articles want to present those articles again? And are there any changes? And then we have to um, vote to amend one of the uh, motions about the PRD. So um, if we were going through in order, uh, Burton, you did the additional dwelling unit. Nathan did the two family, which we're not moving. And then we had several, uh, several articles that we advised to be put on the consent calendar. That's the Hammerhead lot, relief from parking, the throw business district boundary change, the fairs and bazaars and the prohibited uses. And we would still be planning to present all of those. Um, so we can start with, uh, we can start with the PRD um, and look at that one and then make, take a vote to, um, to amend the motion. Uh, remember that we, we're keeping everything in it except with the change of we are no longer um, making the recommendation to change the approving authority to the planning board. We would keep it as the zoning board. Zoning board. And so Elizabeth went back and, and made all that changes and, and sent that out to us. So, so Kristen, you just needed a motion to approve the amended, uh, the the article. I believe so. Okay. Um, so, I would... um, Burton. So it. So the board should vote that they want to amend the um, article. Thirty-four. 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 <laughs> amend article thirty-four to have those. Permit granting authority remain the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, and then a, a, to make sure everything is clean, a second motion to recommend affirmative action on that article as amended. Okay, so I'd make a motion that the Planning Board amend Article, 30, uh, uh, article 34 um, to uh, remove the provision that would shift uh, PRD approval authority from the Zoning Board of Appeals to the Planning Board so that it remains with the Zoning Board of Appeals. And otherwise leave the article as is. Somebody want a second? Second. Okay. Um, Mr. Saya? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Flint? Yes. Ms. Orvidal? Yes. And this is Ms. Ferguson, yes. Okay, and uh, part two of that motion, if somebody wants to take that up. So the motion to submit uh, the, the revised article 34 to, to town meeting for consideration. Elizabeth, is that it? Um, to recommend affirmative action. Yeah, so I make a motion that we recommend affirmative action to the uh, 20, 20 town meeting on article 34 as amended. As amended, yeah. I'll okay. second that. Okay. Mr. Saya? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Flint? Yes. Ms. Orbital? Yes. And Ms. Ferguson says yes. Okay. So that's article 34 as amended. And Matt, would you like to present that at the, I at the hearing? Yeah, I can go ahead and present it. And actually, I think the presentation will be easier now, uh, but I will have to revise it slightly. Um, okay. But uh, yeah, the theme is a lot more narrow than it was before. It was kind of mm -hmm. all kind of over the place before. Right. Well, okay. okay. Um, questions or comments to Matt for making those revisions? We, we have one more meeting before then. So if you had Anything to run by the I can board, share the revised that. presentation next time, but I mean, it'll be minimal changes. Right. Yeah. Okay. I, I'll have a slide at the beginning saying what we changed, and then I'll remove. Well, okay. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, I mean, you've got to catch the public up on, okay, this is what, because that was the main question that people had so far as, well, what, what did you amend? You know? Yeah. Okay. Um, Burton, would you still like to present um, accessory dwelling units? Sure. On the on the nineteenth. Yeah, 
Uh, sure. Um, Elizabeth, can you direct us to where we might find the, the final as is presentations on these? Um, so I will, I'll just resend them out to Thank everybody. You. Thanks. But yes, Kristen, I'm good. Wait. Great, thank you. Um, so we, even though they're on the consent calendar, we're still um, planning to present the um, the several that I mentioned, which I think for the most part were fairly um, non-controversial. So for example, um, Haley, if you still wanted to do the one you did about fairs and bazaars, um, we'd be you know glad to, to have you do that. Um, Alan, if you want to take up um, one of these, like I didn't, I don't know if you had one before, but um, you know, you're welcome to to take one of the. Like Kate had a couple, and I had a couple. So um, let us know if you want to do a hammerhead lot or relief from parking or prohibited uses. They were all, you know, pretty straightforward. Um, and then I had presented the throw boundary change, and that was the one that did have some questions. And so um, the town moderator called one of the one of the neighbors who had had questions um and i actually she's a neighbor of mine and she had contacted me i'm on the row street too so we actually kind of walked and, and looked at that today so that was useful to to hear her perspective um and i think it will help in terms of you know any any changes we make to the presentation to make sure it addresses um you know questions so i i can i'm happy to take that one which i did before which was the the boundary change number number 37 and um just think about that and then um uh, kate is not here so we can assign her all of the rest of them if we want <laughs> and nathan too um you know because nathan was moving um to family and now doesn't have to so um alan would you like to do the present the hammerhead lot or prohibited uses well Trailers and whatnot. Either, either is fine. Okay. Which? All right. How about Hammerhead? Prohibited uses. Which one you want to do? Prohibited uses. Yeah. yeah. You got it. Um. All right. And then um. All right. And then I will give relief from parking to Nathan as a as a little gift, unless we know of somebody who's not going to be at the meeting. So. All right, any questions, comments about the procedure for that uh, August 19th? Um, those presentations or anything that you've heard about um, town meeting that people had questions about? This, this is our chance to let everybody hear everything and then we're not presenting again at town meeting. Just that the select board will be taking positions, you know, on our articles after they, they, they're going to wait until after our public hearing. Okay. All right. I'm going to open it up for public comment and then um, take any liaison reports or um, staff updates before we adjourn. So anyone who is on the line um including our our select board friends is there anything that you would like to contribute all right um how about uh, liaison reports or any other important information that we need to know um, there will be a Jiro, um land public forum on July 28th. So I think, you know, that's worth knowing about. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, that's all I've got. Oh, Elizabeth, anything that you want to uh, tell us from staff update? Um, so the only um, update I have is um, that the, I think it was yesterday, yesterday, yeah, Monday, um, Groundhog Day, uh, the definitive subdivision plan for 1440 um, Main Street was submitted. So, um, but that won't be on the board's agenda till the 
I think the first meeting in September, September 8th. Okay. Um, remind me about the process. Does that go to the board, the planning board and then to the ZBA or just to the planning board? No, this is a, just a definitive subdivision plan. It's, um, it's only within the jurisdiction of the planning board. Okay. All right. Thank you for letting us know that timeline. All right. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Have a lovely meeting I, or lovely uh, week. I will not be here on August 11th. I think Burton will be. And, right. um, and I'll see everybody at the, at the uh, presentations. Thank you. Have a All good right. night. Everyone. Thanks. Good night.